What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna be telling you how your life is a dream and how you can actually wake up from this thing that we call life. All right, now before I get into this video, I really have to make sure that you understand that when you are in a dream at night, you have no idea that you're dreaming when you're in the dream. You can have a terrible nightmare and you're scared in your dream. And then you wake up and you're like, oh, it was just a dream. It wasn't actually real. That's good. So, real life is the exact same. So this is a hard pill to swallow, and I'm going to be explaining this even further. So, this looks real, and you would say, I obviously know if I'm in a dream or not. <laughs> but when you're dreaming, you don't know that you're dreaming until you wake up. Until the dream comes to an end. Or, unless you lucid dream. If you guys have ever had one, that's when you are inside your dream and you become aware in the dream that you're dreaming. That the dream isn't actually real. So life, real life, is the exact same. So I'm going to be pointing out a lot of similarities and really, really they're almost <laughs> exactly the same. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be pointing out a lot of correlations between these two that are the exact same. There's zero difference between what is real and a dream. So first things first, a dream... What is it made out of? It's made out of the exact same thing that everything surrounding you is made out of. It's equally real. It's made out of pure consciousness. Check out my video, What is the Substance of Reality? In order to understand that a little bit more. So everything is made out of one substance called consciousness. This is what is constructing reality. This is ultimately what you are. Your body is made out of the same thing as everything surrounding you. It's, it's one. So inside your dream, when you don't know you're dreaming, <laughs> everyone inside your dream is made out of your mind. It's made out of consciousness. Everything is you in your dream. Just like in real life. Everything is you. You are literally one with everything. Whether you're conscious of it or not. Now, I'm also going to be explaining how to wake up from the dream in this video. So if this is true what I'm saying, this pretty much throws, this throws out everything that you've ever believed to be true about reality. Which is why it might be hard for you to understand because it can be emotionally difficult to just realize that you have been totally lost your whole life in a dream. It's pretty hard to just swallow the fact that the universe is a dream. So, both a dream and real life are made out of the same thing, consciousness. And everything in your dream is you, just like real life. It's all just consciousness. So, in your dream, when you go lucid, if you've ever had a lucid dream, I've had many, and you realize this is a dream, you are then given this freedom to do whatever you want because it's a dream. 
You feel free, really. You feel like nothing can hold you back. You feel amazing. You just enjoy it for what it is. And then it comes to an end. You choose to wake up or, or whatever. So when you go lucid, you have realized your dream world to be an illusion. You realize this isn't what is real. This is just a projection of my mind. And real life is the same thing. When you have really awoken to very profound levels that this is a dream, you can pretty much no longer suffer. So you can find a lot of people like this. They are, they are enlightened beings. They are enlightened people. Now, this isn't the way we conventionally use the word enlightened. This is, this is much different. So these people are no longer identified with the content inside the dream, but they are identified with what is creating the dream, the, the substance of the, of the dream. They are identified with what they actually are. What is, what is the substance of reality? They are, they are identified with being pure consciousness. So they are no longer identified with their body or their mind because they see through this illusion of being a body or a mind. They have broken their attachment and their identity around this. And they've realized where identity comes from and where identity comes from is actually where <laughs> all of reality comes from. It comes from consciousness. So when you're dreaming and there's people in the dream, they are you. And it's the exact same thing in real life because there is no such boundary separating you from the rest of reality. It's all one thing. I mean, you literally are all of reality. You are the whole thing. So in order to wake up from a dream, we have to first come to the realization that we are in fact dreaming. So whatever I personally have a lucid dream, I always just go, oh shit, this is a dream <laughs> in my dream. It's like the same thing over and over again. And then I do whatever I want. I fly around and I do whatever I want. <laughs> so we have to realize that this life here is also a dream. You really need to be able to swallow it. It'll take you a while to warm up to that if you've never heard of it before, but it is in fact true. You're going to have to realize this is a dream in order to wake up from it. So you might think now, but a dream is so like inconsistent, whereas reality, real reality is so consistent. A dream, all sorts of weird, wacky things can happen. I can see people who I haven't seen for years or like a dead relative or I can fly or like big monsters and crazy nightmares and all of this. And in reality, everything is always so consistent. Everything is physical, it's objective, it's like I'm here and you're there, and this is just always what it's been. So a dream has a set of rules that governs it. Now, a dream is also the universe that we're currently living in. So it has a set of rules that governs it. And the, the real reality just seems to have a set of rules that is very consistent. It's, there's gravity and there's like the sun and it's 
it's like this pattern over and over again. It's very consistent. It's a, it's a hard dream to wake up from. See, if you hear something like reality is an illusion, you would think that like, oh, I can see through illusions easily. But no, you can't. <laughs> you know from your own experience that you don't know when you're dreaming while you're dreaming. You know from your own experience that you can't see through illusions easily. So this dream, this universe dream, has a set of rules. Just like a, a dream when you're asleep. There's a set of rules that governs that dream. There's always a set of rules. Now, the set of rules isn't actually what's important. We need to focus on what is what's the structure of this dream. What is it made out of? And when we're in the dream, what am I and what is everything else? So like I said, in the dream, everything is you. You are the whole thing. You are creating the entire experience of the dream. You're, you are literally creating the whole thing. And it's the exact same for real reality. Now, it doesn't seem that way. It doesn't seem this way at all to you. It just seems like you're like a human being on a rock going around a sun in the middle of nowhere in, in outer space. This is probably more about what it, what it seems like for you. But the truth is, is that's not entirely what's happening. So, you have been identified your entire life with things that are not you. And this is what has kept you asleep. This is what has kept you dreaming in this dream. And not realizing that this is actually an illusion. So, you were born, and at around the age of two, you made the distinction. When your mind, when your conceptual mind began to function, began to work, you said, you probably looked in the mirror and said, or you looked at your body and you said, this is me, and everything else isn't me. You made this distinction between self and the rest of reality, as if like you are just this distinct entity that is separate from everything. You made this distinction. And you did this to preserve your mind and body for survival purposes. And from that point forward, you were identified with something you weren't. So that's the, the birth of the ego, the birth of your identity. So your mind has a natural tendency to identify with something. It needs to think that it's something. It has to find something solid and latch on to it and cling to it and identify with it. But really, anything that you can possibly perceive is not you. Because then you can ask, who is actually aware of that? Is my body me? But then, but then who is aware of this? Where is the one that is aware of this? And you might think, oh, it's me right here. It's, it's me that's aware of it. I'm the body and I'm aware. But this is too simplistic. This is way too simplistic. So, in theory, it doesn't actually make sense to be the body. See, you look at your hand. And when you look at your hand, you don't say, yeah, this is me. This right here is me. You say, this is my hand. As if it's something you have. So immediately we realize we're not the hand. Now we do the same for the rest of our body parts. The foot, your toenails, your nose, your eye. So we start picking it apart one by one. And we say, okay, not me. Okay, okay, the, the shoulder. Okay, I'm not a shoulder, not me. Okay, the brain. Well, the brain is just a thought. So I'm not a thought. I'm not the thought of I am the brain. So I can't be my mind either because it just thinks. I'm not any of these thoughts. So I, I'm, not, I'm not this thought, I am the brain. I can't listen to my mind. Whatever my mind tells me I am, I can't listen to it because that's a thought. And that's not what I am. 
I'll never be a thought because these thoughts come and go, but I'm always here. So, in your experience right now, there is no brain. If you get stuck on this, but I just am the brain, there's no brain in your experience right now. So, how can you be the brain? You're here and there's no brain. There's no brain anywhere. So, you need to find out what you are in this experience, in this one right here, not your daydreams, not this, I am the brain, okay, now let's go to the movies. That's a daydream, that's imagination. You're not the thought, I am the brain. You're here now, there's no brain. I can't make it any more simple, I hope you just, I hope you get it. So, in order to wake up from the dream, we have to break our identity. We have to deconstruct our identity with being anything. Because anything in reality is actually not us. When you try and locate what you are, you will never find it as like this like separate entity, as this exact thing that I can grab with my hands and like hit with a hammer. You're not going to find it like this. You can't find it with this autistic mind, with this overly, like, like grossly materialistic mind. It, it won't work. You're, you're just thinking too stupidly to, to get it. If you're just thinking I have to be this thing where I can just grab with my hands and then, okay, now let's, now let's go eat chips and watch Netflix. So really with this process of, of, eliminating things that we aren't like we're not a hand or the fingers or the eyeball we're really it's almost like we're grabbing on to nothing every time there's nothing to grab on to there's nothing safe to latch ourselves onto and that's the exact point the point is you don't know what you are when you say i you have no clue what that is you have absolutely no idea and you're going to have to realize that if you actually want to wake up from this dream and not, not snooze in the dream for 80 years and then die. Because you are going to wake up from this dream. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. Are you going to wake up while you're alive? Or are you going to wait for the end when you're scared shitless and you've lived a, a mediocre life? Are you going to wake up then? When, when, the body, when the body's gone for good? So... This body is not what you are. The mind is not what you are. Every cell in your body dies around a, a five to seven year period. Everything's dead and you have a completely new body. But same old you. You still feel like I'm here. So there's nothing in your body that is you. There's no thought you think of that is you. So these are completely gone. We've erased them from the possibility that we are these things. So in your dream at night, when you go lucid, you realize that none of it is real. You are not identified with any of the circumstances. So you are free from this, this identity making process that your mind naturally does. It's always constructing an identity. And because of these identities, we become attached to things and we suffer. Now, when you're lucid in your dream, you're not attached to anything. You're not identified with circumstances and situations. You don't care because it's not real and it's a dream. It's, it's okay. So you're free from psychological suffering when you wake up from the dream. You are free from suffering. I know that sounds good to you. Now, when we wake up in this dream, it's the exact same. You are free from psychological suffering. That's how happiness actually works. It's transcending the ego it's going beyond your your self-identity your individual separate self-identity 
Because that is the cause of all suffering. <clears throat> so, you might think like, oh, like when I'm in a dream and I'm, I'm lucid or, or whatever, you know, like I don't care about anything in the dream. You, you, you make this sound like a cold and a heartless process. Like you just, you shouldn't care about anything because it's not real. And it's almost like a, a nihilistic world of you. It's like depressing and nothing matters. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not just saying that nothing matters, nothing's real, fuck this. That's not what I'm saying. Waking up from the dream, if it doesn't make you more compassionate and more loving for everything around you, then you're not awake. You're not waking up from the dream. If you're not becoming aware of the suffering of other people and being sensitive to it and learning how suffering works, you're not waking up. You're, you're just, you're, you're fooling yourself. Waking up from real life will involve you being way more detached from everything, meaning you're not dependent on outcomes. So with this freedom, you are completely free to help people. You're, you can do whatever. You have no preference for the way things are. You don't care whether you live or die anymore. This doesn't even matter to you. So you are free to do whatever you want, but you know from the process of waking up, you then understand how hard it is for humans to be happy. So you develop this sense of compassion. It's pretty natural. You just develop a sense of compassion for living beings in general and the suffering of all living beings and how all living beings really just want to be happy. They, they value life and they want to live a, a beautiful life, a happy life. You just naturally develop this. And because you have attained this high level of consciousness and this freedom, you can then teach people how to actually wake up from the dream, how to create these profound experiences that wake you up, that shatter your, your identification with the body, that shatter how you currently perceive reality because how you're currently looking at it is most likely this is me, you have your body, and everything else isn't me. And this is an illusion because when I say try and locate what you are, you can't find it. You can't find what you are. You have no clue what you are. So in real reality, everything is made out of consciousness or your mind, just like a, just like a dream at night. So this is a great metaphor for explaining the nature of reality saying it's like a dream because there are a lot of similarities i don't mean it completely literally like you're gonna wake up when you die and you'll be in a bed i don't mean it like that it's a metaphor there are a lot of similarities between these two and well, they're shockingly accurate. They're, they're, they're very similar. So, in your dream, every, every character, every single character that you talk to is you. I really want you to understand the profundity of that. That in this waking dream, everyone you talk to is also you. Everyone that suffers, their suffering is your suffering. It's the exact same. You talking to them is actually just you talking to yourself. There's no separation. There's just oneness. So life is in fact a dream. And the sooner you stomach this and realize that you need to wake up from it, the better. The more you put this off, 
The more you debate and argue and say it's bullshit, the more your, your, your suffering continues. And I don't want to put it in this sort of depressing, negative way. Like, if you don't listen to me, 20 years of suffering. That's not really what I'm saying. But really, everything I'm saying here can be verified by you. And just being lazy, having your, your little armchair, playing the armchair skeptic, saying that's bullshit, and then going on Netflix and eating potato chips and watching TV... See, this isn't good enough. See, you don't know. Like, you haven't actually validated it. You just said, oh, bullshit, and then went to go live your life. Went to go do the same things. See, you can't work like that. You, you have to try the actual experiments that I've said and validate it for yourself. So, eliminating what it is that you think you are really trying to find what you are, eliminate, eliminating the possibility that you are a separate identity, a separate body, will then create the awakening experience of what you actually are and, and what reality truly is. What, is. what is reality made out of? What is the rock bottom of reality? So meditation also helps with that. I do a lot of that as well, mixed with self-inquiry it's trying to find what you are like i was saying so you would have to do this for a long time i put in a couple thousand hours probably of this and just contemplating before i actually had my first breakthrough experience it took a long time but i could intuitively pick up that that reality just isn't what it seems to be that there's more to it and I can figure it out. That anyone can figure it out. Because you are reality. Are you not reality? Are you, are you this other thing separate from reality? So, since reality is a dream... That means there can't be anything else other than dreams. Now, you can say that dreams are hallucinations in the brain, and, and this isn't a hallucination in the brain. And the problem with that is that you are trying to stand on this, this high ground, like, oh, I got you there, man, I got you there. <laughs> But you haven't got me anywhere. Because a hallucination is a visual without any, any substance. Visuals with no substance to them. That's what a hallucination is. And that's exactly what this right here is. There is no substance to it. It's consciousness. It's made of nothing. It's made out of your mind's projection of it. Your whole experience is mediated through your neurotransmitters in your brain. So you can say that, okay, like let's say, you know, he had a higher consciousness experience. He has higher consciousness experiences. These are just hallucinations. This is the real reality right here. But this is pure arrogance. Did you see this? You're just, it's like my, my reality is the real reality. My consciousness is the real consciousness. The way I see it now, this is the real reality. This is completely ignorant and arrogant. This reality right here is a hallucination. It's a visual without substance. It's only an appearance. There's nothing real to this. There's no, there's no substance to any of this. But you can say that, oh, but this is made of skin cells and atoms and molecules. Look, look, I'm touching it. I can feel it. There's, there's clear substance to it. I'm feeling it. And all of that is made of nothing. That's, it's just an appearance. They're just empty sensations. They're totally empty. There's nothing there. There's no, there's no substance, okay? And I'm not asking you to take that on blind faith. 
I have given you the tools to awaken, to experience this meditation and self-inquiry. So with these two tools, if you are actually dedicated and you want to figure it out, you can do it. If you've sat through this much of the video, congratulations. <laughs> I've given you the tools to really go beyond what your culture thinks of reality. I've really, I've really given you a gift with this video. I've given you a gift. <laughs> So, use it wisely. Don't just claim bullshit and then go back to drinking beer and playing video games and watching Netflix. Actually try it. Try and realize, is this a dream? Contemplate it. What makes you think it's not a dream? What's separating dreams from reality? Where, where's the border between these two? Where is the separation between these two? There is none. All right, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you guys wanna see more, subscribe. It uh, helps me out a lot. And thank you so much. Peace.